Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the M365 Voice. My name is Sarah Hazi. And I am Mike Mononani. I'm Antonio Mayo. Hey there, we're happy to be back again uh, for another episode. Are you ready to take a question out of the question jar today? Let's do it. Yep, right. let's go. Okay, here we go. What is OneDrive known folder move? I like oh, this well. question. KFM. Mm -hmm. KFM, yeah. known folder move. Um, we're going to apologize in advance because sometimes we may say known folder move and sometimes we may say KFM. Right. So we have it implemented at our company. Do you guys have it implemented? I have uh, yeah. in multiple places. I use it personally as well in my own tenant. Mm -hmm. So, yes, it is. I, I use I it personally it. as well. So, maybe we should start with a high level of what it is. It's basically, um, when you set it up, it's basically going to take and uh, move the contents from your desktop, your My Documents, and your My Pictures, and store all of those files in OneDrive. And then you can, of course, sync them back to have a local copy saved. Um, but it's basically taking those files and moving them from your C drive or your computer up to OneDrive. So that way they're backed up, available everywhere where you connect to OneDrive. Right. I think you have that right. Yeah, so you are syncing, you got it right. You're syncing your desktop documents and pictures into your OneDrive account. Yep. And um, it's awesome because you can go into a second PC and connect, connect to your OneDrive and your documents, desktop, and pictures from the other PC will sync down if you have that KFM enabled in your OneDrive in the second machine. So you can keep everything synced uh, and you don't have to worry about if you save something on your desktop and you have to go back again and find it in a different PC so you'll be able to find it, whether in, in a different PC, whether you're traveling from the cloud, whatever that is. I love it. Um, I'm a OneDrive sync client proponent anyway. Um, and, and here's why I love it, because it really removes any of the concern about transitioning from device to device. I have, we've talked about on previous episodes, I have multiple Surface devices. I have a Surface laptop, I have a Surface Go. Both are connected to my OneDrive. I can turn on either of those. I can use my phone and the OneDrive mobile app. I can get to all of my files no matter where I am. And if I got a new uh, PC tomorrow, um, I could set it up and immediately be using it. It just makes it very easy to be able to manage and get to all of your files, particularly if you ever have an issue with a computing device. Um, okay. And we actually know someone last week, I was up in Ottawa uh, for M365 Ottawa, and one of the speakers actually had an issue with their That's computer right. right before a session. And if it wasn't for probably OneDrive and the ability to sync things, right, this could have been a big problem. So. I'm a huge so. proponent of syncing to OneDrive for all for your files. Yeah, I've seen colleagues of mine where um, the laptop dies, and the company ships them a new laptop, and they log in and their files sync down, and it's like they're on the same computer again. Like it's brilliant that way. Um, one question I have though is, um, and Sarah, you described how it worked in a very specific way, so I'm wondering if it actually works this way, right? It's called known folder move. It's not called known folder copy and known folder sync. It's known folder move. So it doesn't actually take the contents of those three folders, move them, and then if you want them, you can sync them back down. Like it is literally in that order. That's exactly how it is. Yes. It is okay. So it's, it's a move up, so they actually disappear from your machine, they move up to OneDrive, and then you have to sync them back down. Well, I think it all happens so fast that, um, but here's why I think it's good to call it known folder move. It's a lot easier to say than known folder replicate. Um, but in addition to that, I think it's important because what do your users need to understand? Um, I know when I've talked to users about it, sometimes they think that's what's actually gonna happen is that the files will be synced to OneDrive, but they're still going to live on the local device. So it's important to, to focus on the fact that, nope, the files are going to move to OneDrive and then sync locally. Um, I don't know why, but a lot of times I think users think about it in the inverse, where they think it's right. still going to live locally and sync to OneDrive. I don't know if That's you right. found that. That's correct. The full, the files are living in OneDrive. 
So and that's why they call it the move because you're taking the local copy, moving it to OneDrive to, to OneDrive, and you're syncing it back to the exact same location. Right. Um, and that's why uh, when you move when you go to a different PC and you you sync up to your OneDrive, it's gonna get you that those copies because they're coming back from, from OneDrive. Right. If it happens so fast, like say I said, you really don't notice that that they disappeared basically. Uh, technically, they are. It is a move, but they stay there. If you look, if you're watching your your des desktop and you have a full a desktop full of icons, and you won't actually notice. It would flicker probably a couple of times, but you really yeah, don't. it does. Yeah. Like I think I think a key nuance in that to clarify for people is that when they do move, they look like they're still on your machine, but it's showing you a shortcut to the cloud copy which you can then tell it, okay, now sync it down, right? So you still have all these icons on your desktop, for example, and in your folders that are on your desktop. So it looks like the files are there, but if you look at the status column, there's a little cloud and you have to ask it to either, you know, keep a local copy for everything in a folder or specific files, and then they start coming down and they, they stand. Right. So there's that little nuance where you're right, it does move it, and then it looks like it's still there, but you have to sometimes tell it which files to bring back down. Correct. And for for people who are wondering right now, if if you <clears> stop <throat> using this functionality in OneDrive, what happens to you, those files that were on desktop docs and pictures? Technically, when you stop this no folder move to the cloud, you can stop or start that. Um, that will be stay available locally. So then now you have a local version. It it pulls them from your OneDrive, they're no longer in your OneDrive, or there's a, probably a copy of them in OneDrive, but now they're not saying it, but you have a copy locally and a copy in your OneDrive right. uh, as well. So that connection is broken, but uh, if you stop if you stop that KFM setting. So you don't lose them from your desktop or documents or pictures if you are wondering mm -hmm. what happens if you stop that functionality. Right. And I think there's a lot of benefit to that whole, um, you know, they're moved up and then just the, you know, there's there's a placeholder, like an icon on your desktop showing you the file, and but it's still actually in the cloud and you can tell it to sync it down because it saves you a ton of space on your system exactly. um, so yeah. that you can still see all the files that you had. You can still double click and access it. It just has to download it quickly, which it and does, it, and then open it. And it's such an improved solution, especially if you have users that, for example, have multiple devices. Um, are transitioning between multiple computers and multiple locations. They log in, they can get to all of their files. Or if they have to do a computer swap or a computer replacement, makes it so easy for them to get back up and working again. Um, uh, and <clears throat> sometimes you can just get to the point with laptops or makes and models where you'll have, you know, uh, you know, the batteries swell up or anything can happen, right? And it, I think it provides that level of security or safety around having those files be backed up. The challenge is, I think, for some users, um, they have a hard time letting go a little bit of not managing the files on their C drive. They feel more secure with them being on their C drive than they do with the idea of them moving to OneDrive. And I think that that's the hardest thing to maybe explain and help users to feel not just comfortable with, but confident about that those files will be there when you need them and that you can trust it. Exactly. And this this option of this feature was very, very popular when they introduced it a few years ago, back in the days before Windows 7 end of life happened. It was really popular to upgrade to Windows 10, and then we were telling organizations turn it on on your Windows 7, and when you upgrade to Windows 10, all the users' uh, personal files will come over. Uh, so to your point, transitioning from one device to another, upgrading whatever that is, you don't lose anything. And I, on, a, on a personal side, every time I reset, sometimes you get to the point you want to reset your your PC. Yeah. Back in the days, it was a headache because you have to back up your, your files somewhere else. Even though I've been using sync, the sync client forever, I've yeah. always placed documents in my documents or pictures folder or desktop, so I had to take care of those, and I don't have to worry about them anymore. I just reset and then reinstall a couple of apps, and then that's it. I'm back in business in a couple of hours. Yeah. So how do you enable it? Uh, it's actually pretty easy. 
If you go into your OneDrive Sync Client settings, there is a tab called Backups. And, and uh, on the backups, you will see the three uh, icons, one for desktop, one for des uh, my documents, and one for my pictures. And you don't have to choose them all. You can pick and choose whatever you want to back up. And once you enable it, it will go up to the uh, to OneDrive. Uh, that's one way of doing it manually. You can push that change also through some GPO policies that will yep. change those into your uh, registry settings. And this is the most common scenario because when you're setting up OneDrive for organizations, you don't want them to go and ask them to do it manually. You can just push that to them automatically. Yep. So, one so of the, the, oh, sorry. No, go ahead, sir. I was going to say one of the top user questions that I get, especially around files on their desktop, is what will happen to shortcuts? custom shortcuts mm. that I've set up on my desktop, will those carry over to OneDrive? And yes, they do. Yeah. And after you enable OneDrive known folder move, those shortcuts should still be fully functional. Um, that's Sorry. actually one of the most common user questions uh, that I know that I get. Will my shortcuts on my desktop still work? Correct. If you have the same shortcut on two different devices and you enable KFM on both devices, you might get duplicates. And what I do is when I get duplicates and they tell you one is coming from this PC and this one's coming from this PC and it just go to the one. Uh, you don't need to shortcuts for the same thing. Gotcha. So, uh, so when it comes to rolling it out, if, if you're a large enterprise and you want to roll it out to all your users, GPO <laughs> is the way that you would do that? That's right. Yeah, it was some some PowerShell script. You will be able to run that uh, silently in the background, and it will it will turn it on. You can target different different groups if you don't want to roll it out to everyone at the same time. Just thinking about support and calls and people just asking questions, uh, so you can roll it out in 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 stages. Uh, to the opposite, if you are in an organization that you don't want this feature, you can block it as well. So it's the same way you can roll it out. To everyone in the organization, you can also block it so people cannot do it. And can you prevent people from turning it off? Like if you're a large org, you roll it out and you don't want people to turn it off on their own machine. Can you prevent that? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think mm. you can. Um, well, and here's the thing. Even if you could prevent them from turning it off, you can't stop them from closing their OneDrive sync client if it's open on their machine, I think. Fair point. E point, but in order for a known folder move to work, it's dependent on the OneDrive sync client running, right? So I always tell people, look in your system tray. Do you either have a blue cloud icon or a black cloud icon, depending on what version of OneDrive you have, the consumer or the enterprise? But um, if they choose to want to turn off the sync client executable on their computer, then the sync client's not going to run. Right. Gotcha. Um, to that point, if you have the two icons on your computer, one for the uh, OneDrive uh, consumer and OneDrive for business, you cannot turn on that feature on both because you cannot back up or move your folders, non folders, into two different tenants. So you, once you turn it on for one tenant, you cannot just turn it on for the second. You have to go and turn it off in one tenant before you be able to turn it on on the second tenant. <clears throat> that okay. makes sense. And Mike, you actually taught me this because I didn't know it before about the two different OneDrive icons and that OneDrive for business, which would be the enterprise version of OneDrive, is a blue cloud icon. OneDrive consumer is a black or a very dark gray cloud icon, you can have both sync clients running and connected to do different OneDrives, but you just can't have known folder move pointing at both. Right, exactly. I feel like we've covered a lot about known folder move in a short amount of time. Yeah, is it, Sarah, can you repeat just which are the three folders that it, that it known folder move does? Uh, your desktop, your My Documents, and your My Pictures. Okay. And if there's other folders you want to sync, you would just pick them to sync like any other folder in OneDrive, I, I imagine. Um, you will have to move them into your OneDrive. Sorry, that's what I mean. Yeah, 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 that's what I mean. You could just, if there's other folders, you could just move them into your OneDrive directory and then those will sync too. And based on that, in the inverse, if you actually have users at your company who have some kind of protected content that for whatever reason, Maybe by policy, you don't want that content enabled or you don't want it stored in OneDrive or you have DLP settings that will find in quarantine that data. 
um, before you enable known folder move, you would want those users to move those files out of their desktop or their My Documents or their My Pictures. If they put it anywhere else on their C drive, for example, then it won't get moved to OneDrive. So then you wouldn't have that problem. So before you enable known folder move, you might want to think about, are there any types of content that you would not want moved to OneDrive and then advise your users to kind of move or shelter that content in a different location on their C drive if they needed to, or maybe in a different housing location entirely. That's a great point. Um, to that point, if you are a large organization, before you deploy that, you may want to limit the bandwidth consumption by OneDrive because Typically, as a user, you store a lot, especially in your pictures, you might have a lot of content there. Yes, you do have one terabyte in, in OneDrive, and you will have more than enough to move this document up there. But if you turn it on on a Monday morning and every single user is syncing all this content to OneDrive, <clears throat> it might consume a lot of your bandwidth and your internet connection becomes slow. So you can control yep. how much you can use, how OneDrive can use in your bandwidth. You can control that much? Yes, you can. You can. And is yeah. that also a GPO setting? That is also a GPO setting. Okay. Yeah. Well, I feel like we've covered a lot. Um, final thoughts about known folder move for OneDrive. Use it. It saved me quite a bit. Yeah. It'll when, save you hard in the long run. <laughs> yes. When they first turned it on in our company, it was a little disconcerting. There was a lot of flashes. There wasn't a ton of communication beforehand. Uh, that it was being turned on there was a little bit uh but once it got set up and um uh being used it's been fantastic like mm -hmm. saving us from uh you know machines that die and yes. um, having backups and being able to bring that content down to other machines as well so yeah it's fantastic agreed perfect well thank you so much for joining us for this episode we'll catch you next time bye everybody Bye bye, bye, -bye.